do. And Kip's, you know, continued on doing films. He's got, I think, four films in the works right now as well. Mm -hmm. So um, even though we're not working together as intimately as we did with Cowspiracy and What the Health, we're both still producing films and still supporting each other. And I think it's, in, to be honest, it's it's for the best because we're producing twice as many films now. Yeah, I just want to say, like, you're you're both, like, kind of in the same direction, still, still ongoing. And uh, yeah. if anything, you're even stronger in this sense, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah, because yeah, I think running for good was amazing. Like in my opinion, yes. it's it really is, you know, just the best you did. Because I, I mean, I love conspiracy. I love what the hell. I think these movies are so important and so good. But there was, and also there was something just incredibly amazing about Fiona. I mean, I I'm just blown away by her. I think she's just a powerhouse of a woman. And <laughs> for you to, you captured it so well, who she is and, and just her, her drive. And I mean, this is, he's unstoppable. Like it was oh, just thanks. such a great, great movie. Because also this is another thing I wanted you to talk about is like, you also, sometimes it's really hard to film, right? Because you were in really, sometimes you're in very hard conditions that make you sick or, you know, like you were, in the desert like getting pretty yeah. ill right at that time of the of the of making that movie yeah so running for good follows fiona um as she runs marathon de sable which is the considered the toughest foot race on earth it's 156 miles through the sahara <laughs> desert right. and and i went and filmed with her and so i'm running alongside her for you know almost half the race carrying gear and trying to keep up and it, <laughs> and it, it made for beautiful like visually it's I'm really proud of that film. It didn't have the uh, the reach and success as Cowspiracy or What the Health, which you know is understandable. It's it's more of a niche film. It's a sports documentary, uh, but it's about mm. this. You know, why is she pushing herself to run these extreme races? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it was really hard and really hot, and I ended up getting horribly sick um, in Africa. Ended up with a severe respiratory infection. Almost <laughs> died in South Africa, <laughs> and I and then I showed up at your. You're in Miguel's house uh, a week later, still pretty sick. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, you said, I've been good. I don't know if you remember me coughing yeah, yeah. my lungs up. I but. do. I do remember. I do remember yeah. that. Yeah, I do remember yeah. that. And just and even like f before you came here, it was like, oh my god, this is what's happening to Keegan. I was like, oh no, yeah. you know, because I also think like a lot of people think. I really think a lot of people think, oh, Keegan, or, you know, what you do, and they kind of romanticize your life because you know you're this cool filmmaker, and oh my god, you know. Netflix is showing your works and stuff, but it is freaking hard work, you know, and uh, and putting yourself in in yeah in certain conditions that are dangerous and uh, and and really harsh, you know. So I think that yeah. that's also a very big part of what you do, isn't it? Like, well, thanks. Yeah, it is. You know, it a lot of times we are doing things as you know, especially if you're doing investigative films, you are putting yourself in hard places. And mm -hmm. even if they're not like physically dangerous, they're emotionally really hard. You know, like making Cowspiracy, there was a certain level of physical danger that we're facing by, you know, exposing this industry. But emotionally it was really tough because we're investigating how this destruction is to the planet. And I found myself mm -hmm. being really oh, there's a Sparky. There's a little of my co-host. My co-host is uh, <laughs> my, my co-host is talking. <laughs> um, but yeah, so there, there's an emotional element too. And so, like this current film, <laughs> "Hungry for Justice," that I'm doing about food justice has mm -hmm. a certain element that is uh, physically dangerous, but emotionally, it's really, ch really challenging because you're looking at suffering. I mean, a couple of weeks ago, we were in Navajo Nation, which is one of the largest uh, indigenous reservations in the United States, and we're interviewing. Um, Gloria Ann Begay, who's a food sovereignty activist there. Mm -hmm. And you see the reality of what, you know, indigenous people in the American Southwest are dealing with, you know, some of the highest rates of diabetes in the world, of heart disease, of cancer. And these are people who haven't struggled with those things before. And so the emotional elements are really, really challenging. And that's a big part of, I think, making these films is being prepared for that. Mm -hmm. and, and how do you prepare yourself, like, for that? Like, do you have you know, any... It's, it's all, for me, it's always thinking about where is the good I can do? You know, mm -hmm. it's really easy to get overwhelmed with like, hey, we're, the situation is hopeless. And I think a lot of situations are truly hopeless, but it's where can we make an impact today? You know, mm -hmm. where can we help someone or can we minimize suffering? And so that's where I always focus on is acknowledging and, and realizing things are going to be tough. Um, and then perspective too, is that seeing other people suffer is hard, but you're not suffering the way they are and so mm -hmm. it's always that perspective where it's yeah as bad as i can might feel for myself i'm like hey i'm not living in that i'm not dealing with that mm -hmm. so 
Yeah. Yeah. That's and and then when you come back from making these kind of movies, is there anything that makes you feel, like? Do you do things to make you feel good again, or like how? What what do you do to take a break from from the hard stuff that you've seen? Um, I've I've started mountain biking again, so that's ah, that's good. Kind of my my out. Um, yeah, being outside, yeah, reconnecting with nature as much as possible. Yeah. I, I'm very fortunate to live in a beautiful place where I can walk out my door, and there's literally a hundred trails right there. Wow. So that's one of the reasons why I moved here is, is for that. It's like emotional support and healing and self care and all that soft, mm-hmm. gooey stuff. But it's important. It's very you know? important, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, I mean, it's like if you want to continue, especially <clears throat> as activists, if you mm-hmm. want to, you know, burnout is so real. And it's like I've seen so many people, they push so hard and they burn out. And yeah. I've, I've, I'm on the verge of burnout constantly. Yeah. And so it's it's really important to, yeah, take care of yourself. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. the first rule of first aid is don't create a second victim. So yeah. if you can't. If you can't help any other one, someone else, if you're hurting yourself. Yeah, no, that's. I think that's a really good thing. You just, and it, I'm really glad you brought us up because at the moment I'm touring and uh, I'm going to lots of different places, and I talk about you know veganism and and teach yoga and and also do these talks about animal rights activism. And I always say that, like, yeah, there are so many animal rights, uh, you know, suicidal and depressed, and you know, and I've lost friends to suicide because it is such a hard thing we've seen i've seen horrible stuff too you know and it is so important that you know that you also acknowledge that that there is burnout there is that there we all have our boundaries you know there's always going to be a time where you kind of also need to have that mountain bike ride to you know so you can keep making the amazing work that you do so i'm glad that you did you have something that gives you that you know because it's yeah it's so important i think thanks yeah i appreciate that and do you like how do you how do you feel about the fact that um that conspiracy is still such a huge like do you sometimes feel like oh i'm always gonna be you know conspiracy keegan when you also have all the new work coming like how do you kind of balance that for for you yeah That's interesting. Uh, I am super fortunate and super grateful that Cowspiracy continues to be relevant. Um, and actually, in, in some respects, I wish it wasn't relevant. I wish it was like <laughs> a, a historical film. Like, oh, yeah, that's what we used to do to the planet and animals. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but, but yeah, last month I was giving a talk at a, a summit about the environmental impact of, of animal agriculture. And, and I'm very grateful that I'm still given those opportunities to talk about diet and impact on the planet because i think that's that's at the core you know it's a, if we don't have a planet to live on what's the point of saving the animals mm-hmm. um, in some respects so it's i am i'm very grateful that cowspiracy continues to be important and relevant and shaping people's lives you know sadly when you know media started paying attention to the amazon burning this past summer mm-hmm there was a resurgence of interest in cowspiracy because we talk about that and how mm-hmm. you know, up to 91% of Brazilian Amazon destruction is for animal agriculture and that these fires were because of grazing. It wasn't for any other reason than they want to raise animals to, for mm-hmm. people to eat. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm super grateful. You know, I wish all of my films to do well. I, I really wanted Running for Good to do you know, be a huge success Mostly mm-hmm. because I want Fiona to get the attention she deserves. You know, Fiona yeah. is this incredible activist. She runs a sanctuary where she takes care of almost 500 animals every single day. Mm-hmm. And she runs 20 miles a day. So I want people to know her story so they'll support her work. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, of course, I want people to see what I think is a beautiful film. Mm-hmm. But again, I'm I'm grateful for any attention that these films get because it's it's all for a message, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and it has also created a lot for you, right? Conspiracy has also really created a path for you. So people also really a lot of people, also a lot of people who would have never even come across Keegan the vegan activist have seen you and your work now. So I think it also created a, a big path for you. I would say that you're now still walking on. And, definitely, definitely, I'm very thing. grateful. Because how did veganism come into your life, Keegan? Like, I know you're very um, passionate about that. And uh, tell us. <laughs> <laughs> so I was really fortunate to be raised vegetarian. So from birth, I mean, I've never eaten meat. And my mom raised us with two ideals, which was don't hurt anybody, which meant don't hurt your <laughs> brother's body or sister's body or cow's body or rat's body. Don't hurt anybody. And always question authority. And <laughs> Right. Yeah. So it's like those are those are pretty, pretty radical ideas to raise kids with. Um, <laughs> and 
when I was like a you know early preteen, I got into punk music and hardcore, and a friend turned me on to this band called Earth Crisis, which was super heavy metal hardcore, and they talked about uh, radical sobriety in the form of straight edge and veganism, animal liberation, and I realized as a vegetarian. I thought I wasn't doing harm, but I realized because of this band that the egg industry was extremely violent to both mother hens, you know, taking their eggs and their babies from them, Mm -hmm. but also that they kill all the male chicks. And then all those mothers are also killed when they stop laying as many eggs. Um, And the dairy industry, the same, you know, taking babies Mm. from their mothers and and killing those babies if they're male and killing the mothers once they stop producing as much milk. I realized I couldn't really live this like no harm ahimsa lifestyle if I was supporting those industries. And so the only logical step would be to go vegan, you know, to you know, abstain from supporting those industries in any way. And it did, it, it totally shaped my life, you know, hardcore punk music, mm-hmm. as I mentioned at the beginning of this interview is really influential because you can talk about radical ideas and, and influence kids and, and people in a way that most pop music doesn't. Um, and so, yeah, that set me down this path of, of animal activism that I've been on for gosh, 22 years now. Wow. So it's, it's a, uh, yeah, it's, it's a life lifestyle and a lifelong journey of Absolutely. just trying to do, yeah, minimize harm. And do you miss making music? You know, I, I do, but I still make music. Um, I, I had a hardcore band for a brief minute and I'm <laughs> still recording, uh, music and I think about music all the time, but as far as a touring musician, there's parts of it I miss. Mm-hmm. Um, I miss touring with one of my best friends Miguel yes, and getting all, getting to see know. the world together. Yeah, he misses and, he misses that too. Believe me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um but I'm I'm super grateful that I've gotten the opportunities I've gotten. And again, this is all about how do I have the biggest impact possible? And mm-hmm. so while music did have an impact and I did get messages and and talk to people who say, "Hey, you know, I I looked at population in a different way. I looked at sobriety in a different way because of your music." Um, that reach was was limited compared to the films, and so yeah, yeah maybe one day I'll I'll go back to music in a more serious way. But for now, the films are are filling that. Yeah, and it's also like you said, like it's I think we're also it's another gateway you're using to reach uh, as many people as you possibly can. So I think that and the music is always with you, isn't it? Like it's who you are. And, yeah, you know, and and you and it's also nice because you have. Uh, recorded music that um, that you can you know people can still listen to and you know you 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 have that as well like that's always there like the the messages right. in your music I think that's so amazing and um, yeah I really I really we have to put a I'll put a link in uh, in all the notes for uh, for this so people can uh, because people can right people can listen to your music yeah. can't they yeah yeah there's uh, yeah X True Nature X online and Bandcamp and spotify and yeah Google yeah and, everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> anyway, music. and all the all the other all the other many ways of uh uh-huh. of finding your music and um so at the moment you're saying you're doing you're working on four different uh projects yeah. and are they all gonna are they all gonna be out next year or are you like what are your so hungry for justice should be out in uh 2020 um Another one, unfortunately, I can't talk about. Yeah, I just want to say, I'm sure, I'm sure there's uh, like some secretive stuff yeah. going on. Uh, yeah. yeah, there should be at least two coming out in 2020, and then 2021 and 2022, uh, one and, and another. So wow. it'll be, yeah, it's it's a while coming. So yeah, uh, yeah. What I'm trying to kind of transition to is doing more writing films and producing films versus directing, because right now I'm gone almost two weeks out of every month on the road filming, mm-hmm. and that. I've been doing that for yeah eight years. Um, yeah, I mean yeah, two years ago I was gone for almost six months. Um, mm-hmm. Well, two, 2019 I've been I've been gone for almost seven months. Mm-hmm. So it's a lot on the road. Um, so I'm I'm trying to transition be home more. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a really good like that's a really good thing I think for you and your wife. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You know, it's it's nice. It's nice because you it's can be nice. on that mountain bike and you know. Mm-hmm. And if you have all that beautiful beautiful nature to, close to you, you you need to be in it. Like it's yeah, of course. Very, I totally get that because it's also it's not just making a movie, right? You usually also promote. Like you were also here when what the health was out promoting mm-hmm. it here in Portugal, and you know you were going to different places and. Like that's also hard work, isn't it? Like, you know, just yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, it, it's not hard work in the sense of like putting a roof on 